Hey, BookTube, and welcome to my embarrassment. Hey, BookTube, it's Kim at Middle of the Book March. I wanted to do this video today as a start to Black History Month for February uh, in the U.S. I believe the U.K. celebrates it in a different month, but here it's the first day of Black History Month. I'm filming on Tuesday the 1st. <laughs> So what I wanted to show you was um, pre and post booktube. I first started my channel at the end of 2019. And at, uh, also at the end of 2019, I did a demographic study of my book group, the Critical Chicks. And we've been in existence since 2001. So last year was our 20th year. We're going on our 21st this April. At the end of 2019, I took some statistics and I wanted to share those with you. And I also wanted to share some post booktube statistics, but I'm going to start the video by showing you some of my favorite books from pre booktube from my book group days. These are, this is only, I think I have seven books here and I'm only going to very quickly show them to you. And, uh, kind of discuss a pattern. So let's let's go. And these are in no order. One of our favorites, actually I think the favorite book for the, the entire group as we voted is The Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. <coughs> Excuse me. This is the first in a quartet of a romance between a witch and a vampire, um, but it's much smarter and more mature than that. It's not Twilight, but it is a different type of book. It's set in Oxford at the Bodleian Library. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, and it's it's literary, it's fun, it's plot driven. It's It was so much fun to read. And Deborah Harkness is a professor of history, or she was a professor of history. I don't know if she still is. Um, so she's an, a professor and an academic and a historian. And this was voted as to be our favorite book for the entire for all of us. There are nine of us currently. Um, one of my all-time favorites is Ahab's Wife by Sina Jeter Nasland. I've brought this on my channel before. This is basically exactly what it sounds like. It is the, a retelling of the wife of Captain Ahab of Moby Dick fame. Um, it said, the first sentence in the blurb says, Captain Ahab was neither my first husband nor my last. Her name is Una Spencer. And she is the triumphant hero in the retelling of the story of Captain Ahab's wife. Absolutely loved this book. This is one of those books, very literary. Every page had some gorgeous writing on it. When we discussed it, this, I think, even now is the longest discussion we've ever had in book group. This one is um, one of Wally Lamb's books. I know this much is true. Uh, this is the story of twins. Dominic is one of the twins and his brother um, lives with schizophrenia and, it, and it's the dynamic between their, the twin brothers. This is a huge book. It's, I think it's over 900 pages, um, around 900 pages. When, we've, when I finished reading this for book group, I turned around and started reading it all over again. It's, it's just an amazing book. I loved it. Another one is Alice Hoffman, The Dove Keepers. This is actually a biblical story. Uh, a retelling. Um, in 70 CE, 900 Jews held out for months against armies of, of the Romans on Masada, a mountain in the Judean desert. And this is kind of a retelling. Um, let's see. Uh, Yael, Y-A-E-L. It's um, a, f a novel about women and women's community and how they keep doves. It was just... Alice Hoffman is a favorite writer. I loved the book. It's it's beautiful in its writing and its description. Um, and I just, really, it was definitely a hit. Again, another one of my, these are, I, I gotta stop saying that because all seven of these books are in, they're all five-star books for me and they were just phenomenal. This is such an underrated book. I think this is her only novel, but it's The Orchardist by Amanda Coplin. Again, this is like, this reminded me of Grapes of Wrath, but not so depressing. It's the turn of the 20th century in a rural stretch of the Pacific Northwest. It's a family that tends an apple orchard and talks about the 
the relationship, a marriage that deteriorates, a father and his daughter. It's so well written and such a gorgeous story in a beautifully written, beautiful, descriptive language. One of my favorite classics of all time is East of Eden by John Steinbeck. For anybody who has recently read this, Kathy, am I right? Am I right? Um, I absolutely love this novel. And it, again, it's a, it's a chunker, um, kind of a, an epic family saga. Um, first published in 1952. Yes, 1952. Another big hit. The last book I'm going to show you, um, this book is, is almost like, I have this in hardcover and in paperback, and it's, it's almost, it's emotionally valuable to me. The book has no monetary value, but it's Evidence of Things Unseen by Marianne Wiggins. This is another book that I've showed you on my channel many times. This is set in, uh, let's see, America at the Brink of the Atomic Age. It's the years between the two world wars. And its FOSS has returned to Tennessee from the trenches of France. So talking about going back to Tennessee with his new wife and seeks work at the Oak Ridge Laboratory. So there's so much in here about, you know, the burgeoning nuclear age and the time before the war, between the wars. Um, it's just a gorgeous, beautifully written um, heartbreaking book and one of one of my booktube's favorites for all of us. Now, why did I show you those books? Those are seven of my all-time favorites in and outside of book group. What do they all have in common? Did you notice? Oh wait. I wish I could insert the Jeopardy music here. They're all written by white people. And I, I was horrified to realize at the end of 2019, when I did the statistics of all the books we read in book group, what I found, and I'm going to share those numbers with you. In up until 2019, now this is from 2001 until 2019, the book group read 157 books. Uh, we started off meeting every month, but depending on schedules, We've been meeting every month, every six weeks. Sometimes we've had to go a couple of months. And my book group graciously gave me um, a whole summer where we nobody met. And uh, actually, it was I don't know if it was a summer or if it was three months in a row that we put the book group on hold so I could finish my graduate degree and just I'll forever be in their, in their graces for that. So we've read a total of 157 books. Um... Let's see, 67 of them were men. So 42% of all of the books we read were written by male authors. Six of the books out of 157 were written by Asian authors. Five of the books were written by Latinx authors. Two of the books were written by Indian authors, people from India. Two of the books were written by authors from the Middle East. And three of the books were written by uh, black authors. And out of 157 books, 11% of them were written by authors of color. And when I, when I put those numbers together, I was horrified and embarrassed and sad and all of the feelings. Um, I couldn't believe that we had only read in 19 years three black authors. And I started to think about that and I... Uh, I'm all about the transparency here, but it never occurred to me. It never occurred to me to kind of look back and look over when we were picking books, why were we suggesting and picking the books that we brought? We did bring plenty of books that were written by authors of color or black authors or um, uh, LGBTQ authors. Quite often, we didn't pick them very clearly. And I didn't do a study of authors um, from the LGBTQ plus community. Um, and a lot of them I would not have known only because I would not have been able to look into every background. So I wasn't always aware of um, which authors would have fallen into that community. So 
I can generally assume that the majority of authors we read were, were straight white women. <sighs> so I'm going to compare those numbers to the last three years that I've been on BookTube. In 2020, this is my personal reading, I read 110 books. 79 of them were by women. 26 of them were by men. Five of them were by authors who are either transgender or non-binary. 36 of them were authors of color. And 28 of them were black authors. So in, what, in 2020, white authors composed 46 of the books I read and authors of color were 64. So 72% of the authors that I read in 2020 were women, 23% were men, 42% were white, and 25% were black. In the year 2020, I read 28 books by black authors, and in 19 years of my book group, I read three books by black authors. I think in 2020, what happened was I was just, I felt so ashamed of myself and embarrassed at the limit I put on my reading and the constraints that I didn't even realize I was doing it. And then once I saw those numbers, I thought to myself, what in the friggin world was wrong with me? Why did I not reach out for authors of color, for authors who were gay, from authors who had transitioned, or other authors, whether they were from a different continent, whether they spoke a different language or were a different color than me. Why did I not reach out for those? And I think in 2020, when I realized what those numbers were from the previous 19, 20 years, I, I made the, the active conscious effort to reach out and to go for books that were written by other authors different than me. I am not a saint, and I certainly am not a, a white savior of authors of color, but what I want to do is not only promote other authors besides straight white women, but I want to give my money in support of authors that are different than me, black authors, trans authors, um, Asian authors, authors of a different religion, Muslim authors, everybody, every type of writer of a book who I you know, two years ago may not have reached for. What about 20, what about last year? What about 2021? <laughs> 2021, I read 130 books. 93 of them were by women, so 72%. 32 were by men, 25%. Five were by trans or non-binary authors, so 4%. And black authors composed 22 books, which was 17%. Other authors of color, authors of color in total were 58 books, which was 45%. So between white authors and people of color, it was 55 and 45. Um, so it's similar to 2020. I actually read less white authors in 2020, 42%. So kind of in the same area. Um, but last year, I was so much more conscious of the authors I was reaching for, and the books that I was interested in. What about this year, 2022? Uh, January just ended, and I've so far I've read 13 books. All of them were by women. Five of them were by white women. Three of them were by black women. Two of them were by native or indigenous women. And three were from other people of color. So 39% were by white authors, 23% by black authors, 15% by Native or Indigenous authors, and 23% by other authors of color. So what am I telling you all these numbers for? I'm telling you all these numbers to be totally transparent and out and open, because I want to do this differently. And what does it mean when a reader uh, makes a conscious effort to read more widely, more diversely? Um, I don't want to pat on the back. I don't want this to to be me saying, oh, look at all the good I'm doing. Because all I'm doing is sitting on my ass in my house, reading a book written by an author of color or LGBTQ authors. That's not doing anything for anybody. I'm not taking any action. What I am doing is 
you know, pushing all that information into my brain and learning something new and maybe equipping myself with other perspectives. Well, what am I going to do with that? That's the real question. The other thing that this does, I'm hoping, is the more I spend money on books written by people of color or LGBTQ authors or disabled authors or authors from other countries or other marginalized groups that I'm not even aware of at this point. What else does that do? It Hopefully my money supports their efforts at their art and their literature. And hopefully that sends a message to the publishing powers that be who are made up primarily of white men to say, oh, okay, we're noticing some trends. We're noticing some trends that readers are actually buying more books that are not written by white men or are not written by white authors or are not written by white straight authors. So maybe, maybe that's a little bit of something. My reading has been changing and evolving and I'm really, really looking forward to more positive permanent changes. So February is Black History Month, and what I have done so far is the majority of books that I've read in January even were not by white authors. But for the month of February, I am concentrating on books written by black authors, and those could be either nonfiction or novels. And February is the beginning of the BookTube Prize, and I am going to be judging translated fiction. So I will hopefully be very deep involved, deeply involved in books by um, authors from other parts of the world. So I'm really looking forward to that. But around those books, I also want to choose my books differently. I want to decolonize my bookshelves and that I'm really looking forward to. So I want to make sure once February is done that, you know, my reading of black authors just did not encompass one month. I want to make sure going forward that it's a regular habit that my reading is varied and I'm reaching for things that two or three years ago I may not have even thought about. So I hope that ramble made sense and <clears throat> if anybody can relate to that let me know. So that's it. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Um, if you've read any of the books I showed you let me know that too and what you thought. Uh, let me know if you've analyzed your own reading and your own buying habits. Um, and if you've, I've also been unhauling. So let me, let me know if you've done that as well. If you've unhauled anything that you don't have any interest in, that you don't feel is appropriate for your reading anymore, that you didn't like, whatever you're doing to your bookcases, your bookshelves, let me know. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye everybody.